Hello everyone, and welcome to my Days of Our Lives 24 channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Rafe requests to EJ to return Gabby's case, and Nicole finds Abby's implicating notes Rafe meets Ava at Wendy and Tripp's place, they left her a key while they're in Hong Kong. He tells her the functioning supposition that will be that Gil killed Lee. Could she at any point assist them with demonstrating it? She demands she is clueless, at the end of the day consents to give her best for help. Eric comes to the onlooker and tracks down Thomas there for take your child to work day. Thomas needs to be a columnist like his mother. Chad goes along with them gladly smiling. After Eric sends Thomas to look at the photograph room, he notes what an extraordinary youngster he is. Chad credits Abigail. Eric is certain she's grinning down on them. EJ rages into the manor, astonished to see Nicole. She's there on break from work. She needed to attempt to make peace with Holly, yet she's out. EJ apologizes for his part in their battle, however Nicole realizes he was simply attempting to help, like he generally does. Describing that Chloe brought forth Holly and a care fight followed, she contemplates whether things would be different had she raised her all along. She was expecting to get that opportunity with their child. EJ bristles. At the bistro, Stefan and Kristen toast to finding Lee's genuine executioner and Gabby at last returning home. In spite of not understanding Stefan's affection for Gabby, she truly trusts they get a genuine opportunity to be together. Simply get that bitch far from me. Stefan advises her that Gabby's not out yet. In addition, that lead fell into her lap since he tracked down the dark book. Kristen cautions him not to backpedal on their arrangement. Stefan reaffirms that the mission is to remove EJ and embed her as president, however getting Gabby out of jail is the need. Stefan needs to urge EJ to return Gabby's case, yet Kristen persuades him to trust that Rafe will track down more proof. Sloan finds a tanked Leo on the recreation area seat with an alcohol bottle in an earthy-colored paper sack. She shouts at him for exploding her life by enlightening EJ regarding Jude. Leo calls attention to he was intoxicated and wasn't thinking. He truly apologizes, yet Eric cut him off monetarily. In addition, he accepts Jude ought to accompany his natural mother. Jude is never returning to Nicole, Sloan announces. Ever. At the condo, Rafe raises Ava's criminal past while attempting to sort out why Stefan accepted all negative consequences for her with the medications. Was there something happening between them? Ava guarantees him the main lady Stefan loves is Gabby. Rafe presents his hypothesis that Gil came to the condo searching for her, yet ran into Lee. For what other reason could he come there? Ava destroys, reminding Rafe that Gil was a sexual stalker who she killed justifiably. She develops more profound, thinking Lee kicked the bucket due to her. She would let him know if she knew anything, however she doesn't. Rafe cautions he won't quit digging while his sister's opportunity is on the line. At the house, EJ requests that Nicole go to a forthcoming city lobby pledge drive with him. Nicole is generally glad to be on his arm, yet additionally, she could possibly get something for herself as well as Eric's article on Salem's unhoused. After a great deal of schmoopiness, Nicole goes to work. EJ's light-hearted articulation tenses. At the point when Nicole comes to the paper, she gives Chad a scratch pad she viewed as in her work area's bogus base. Chad pages through it, perceiving Abigail's penmanship. The book is loaded up with details on ODs and medication captures. She probably been dealing with the story not long before she kicked the bucket. Chad calls Jack, who affirms Abby was going to tear a weighty story completely open. Nothing at any point came from it, so he accepted she dropped it. Chad muses that she didn't, and that it was about Salem's expanded medication traffic. Chad understands that Abby was on to Clyde, however did he be aware of it? Confounded by Sloane's announcement, Leo asks why EJ wouldn't need his child. She tells him not to clarify pressing issues. Leo is struggling with living with the culpability and asks how she makes it happen. Sloane has found a sense of peace with it and urges Leo to put it behind them. Insulted, Leo says dislike they neglected to take care of the feline or killed a plant. Sloan cautions him to keep silent. In the room over the bar, a troubled Ava leaves Harris a message. 
To herself, she stresses she'll need to let Wendy know that her sibling is dead a direct result of her. She asks Rafe is off base. Stefan and Kristen find EJ drinking alone at the house. As the kin verbally fight over Demera endeavors, Stefan fakes tolerating that EJ has the chief position closed up. Rafe drops by to give EJ proof that proposes Gabby is blameless. EJ will not return the case. J. Gotten another unwanted guest when Rafe showed up. Following a disagreeable hello from EJ, Rafe introduced EJ with the document that contained photos of Gil's horrendous unique mark on the dark book. Kristen and Stefan looked on with extreme premium as Rafe presented his defense for returning Lee's homicide examination. EJ carelessly gave the record back to Rafe and sneered that Rafe had nothing, particularly since Gobby's significant other had been the one to find the proof. EJ likewise contemplated that the book and the blood could be numerous years old. A dumbstruck Rafe, Stefan, and Kristen contended against every one of E.J.'s focuses. EJ, notwithstanding, held his ground and reminded the gathering that any choice with respect to the case was his choice as the head prosecutor. The case wouldn't be resumed, he gruffly illuminated his irate social event. Eric showed up at the paper office and found Thomas sitting in Chad's seat. Eric energetically welcomed the kid, who made sense of it was his school's take-your-child-to-work day. With a grin, Eric inquired as to whether Thomas would have been the manager one day. As Chad entered, Thomas said that he needed to be a correspondent like his mother. Thomas explained that he needed to be a wrongdoing correspondent. Chad told in and discussed a story Thomas had been dealing with in regards to the secret meet in the school cafeteria. Thomas and Eric shared light kids about the story, and Thomas joyfully left to recover a camera Eric had offered him for the story. An entertained Eric commended Thomas as a decent youngster. With a grin, Chad credited Thomas's great characteristics to the kid's mom. Chad became close to home as he talked with Eric about the amount he missed Abigail and the amount of her Chad found in the children. Her light radiates through every one of us, Chad said contemplatively. Eric was sure that Abigail was grinning down on her loved ones. Chad and Eric discussed parenthood. That's what Eric asserted despite the fact that Jude didn't share Eric's DNA, he'd felt from the second they put my child in my arms that Jude was really his child. Chad encouraged Eric to treasure each second, and Eric called Jude a gift. Chad turned the conversation to Nicole and asked Eric how it had been functioning with her. Chad realized that working with an ex could be a prickly issue. Before Eric could answer, Nicole showed up with a journal close by. Nicole gave the notepad to Chad and made sense of that she had tracked down it in Chad's old room at the manor. Chad opened the book and was shaken to see it contained Abigail's penmanship. He noticed that the last section had been made half a month prior Abigail had passed on. As he read the notes, Chad saw that Abigail had remembered a great deal of measurements and information for drugs and brutal wrongdoing. He was unable to review Abigail truly referencing such a story. Nicole recommended that Jack, as the previous proofreader and boss, could realize something about Abigail's story. Chad concurred and called his father by marriage. After he guaranteed Jack that the children were fine, Chad got some information about a story Abigail could have been dealing with before she had passed on. At the point when he finished the call, Chad refreshed Nicole and Eric on Jack's affirmation that Abigail had been dealing with something lovely weighty. Jack had not known the subject of the story but rather had accepted that Abigail had dropped it. Chad hypothesized that in light of what he had perused in the journal, Abigail had not dropped the story and that it had concerned the medication activity in Salem. Nicole explained that it probably had been a similar medication ring that had placed Holly in the clinic. Chad accepted Abby had been on to Clyde. The inquiry is, did Clyde know it? Chad pondered so anyone might hear.